Greetings one and all and welcome to this hopefully fairly brief update video for From the Depths, covering all the new items which have been added and talking about some of the changes and bug fixes which have been made. So the very first thing I would like to talk about is the laser defense system which is now called the munition defense system. No longer is it only able to shoot down missiles, as we can see in front of us it can now also shoot cram cannons in addition to advanced cannon shells as well. This means that, well, lasers are definitely playing a much bigger part than they used to in terms of the defense of our vehicles, our fortresses, and our structures. It's actually also a little bit too efficient in my opinion. I've been messing around a little bit with much smaller creations than this, and cram cannons seem to be destroyed incredibly easy, even by fairly moderately small laser system, so not quite sure if it's quite balanced yet, but it is certainly a lot of fun seeing very large vehicles basically detonate as soon as they shoot a shell, especially vehicles like the Bulwark and the Alcazar from the Onyx Watch, which use very highly explosive shells. They can do a lot of damage to themselves very, very easily. And that is all shown anyway here with the laser munition defense. The second thing I would like to talk about very briefly is the addition to the laser arsenal, the laser wave front adjuster. Now this is actually really nice. I'm very appreciative that this has been added. It now means we can build lasers which can overcome smoke defenses, but not without a cost. Essentially, the laser wavefront adjuster allows you to penetrate through smoke and laser shielding at the cost of damage. This is really nice in my opinion, because it just means you can build around certain other builds, and it does come at a cost. It's not a straight upgrade. If you have this in and you are fighting against a ship or vehicle which isn't using smoke or laser shields, you're actually just outright losing damage against that enemy. So I am really happy that this is indeed now in the game. Before we get on to the next more interesting item, and in fact the very reason as to why the fortress seems to be breathing at the moment with that very weird distortion effect, I would like to very briefly talk about heavy armor. Heavy armor can withstand tremendous levels of punishment, and its high density provides protection from even the most piercing of munitions, whilst at the same time making it prohibitively heavy and expensive for all but the most crucial of applications. I actually wouldn't say it's that expensive, it's 100 scrap per block, and since you won't be using it too much unless you're building, well, a building honestly, or perhaps a fortress like the one I've been using for this demonstration, I don't really think it's that bad. But either way, its stats are something amazing. Its health is 1000 and its armor is 40. In comparison to the metal block, which only has a health of 290 and an armor of 10. This thing is very, very difficult to destroy. However, the heavy armor is doped with compounds that increase its durability but cause it to take EMP damage. Unlike the metal and such, which actually just transfers the EMP without destroying itself, this will destroy itself. This is a armor which is susceptible to EMP. If this thing is hit with a decent enough EMP missile, you are going to lose a lot of armor, which is a really odd addition, which I'm actually really happy with. Armor which just gets destroyed by EMP. Considering I am a lover of EMP and use it in almost every single one of my vehicles at the moment, I'm really hoping to see vehicles made of this on the enemy team soon. It'll make me very, very happy indeed. Now, I did promise we would get into the reason why the fortress is sort of breathing in the background, but it does come to my attention that this patch is actually also including a lot of things which were added to the dev test quite some time ago, which I've been using in the campaign anyway, so I'm going to very quickly go through them. This is the RTG, which is essentially a form of energy generation. It doesn't use oil in any way, or any type of fuel. It's very 
very expensive when you first add it, but then it constantly stocks up your battery storage. So you're constantly creating energy at the cost of a very expensive start and then absolutely nothing to keep it running. And it's one of my all time favorite items. In addition to this, we have the tactical nuke. The tactical nuke explodes when destroyed and can be used to build an effective kamikaze design. I've messed around with this a little bit during live streams. The damage and range is a little bit less than I expected honestly, but it is still a load of fun and you can build a ship with a self-destruct button easily enough using one of these in the center of the vehicle, which I am very tempted to do soon, just for a bit of flavor on the vehicles so that they cannot be captured by the enemy forces. Go down rather than allow the enemy to capture them, or something silly like that. In addition to this, there are some changes to advanced cannons in the form of, let's have a good look-see, different sizes of ammo clip. As you can see now, there is a much larger larger spectrum than there used to be, and there is also a change to, if I can actually find the thing, the ammo controller itself, along with the ammo customizers. If I just put this here, a bit of an odd place to put it, but sure, that seems completely reasonable. First of all, we have the ammo customizer single module, which I'm really happy with. It's just one single part rather than two, so you don't have to build in twos, which is very nice indeed. In addition to now having the element, there we are, the disruptor conduit, which allows you to which allows you to make the shells anti-shield. Rather than just being standard EMP, when they hit a shield, the EMP is actually delivered then into the shield generator itself, thus destroying the shield. Just checking, and there is one more thing I would very quickly like to touch on before we move on to the breathing thing, which is now being overhyped, I believe, in this video. And that is the simple fact of the laser cavities. I completely forgot this was a new addition since I've been using it since the start of my most recent campaign. There are now different cavities as to what was available before this patch. This includes the single input cavity and the storage laser cavity. Cavity. Both of these have a different role to the standard cavity in that they are more for storage than anything else. They can store a lot more energy to be released upon the initial attack of the laser, but in the form of the single input laser cavity, it can only hold one laser pump, meaning that getting energy into it is definitely a lot slower, and the storage laser cavity, despite holding a lot of energy, can't be used with laser pumps at all. And so we can get onto the two new additions, which are certainly some of the more fun ones. So first of all, we have the Warp Controller, also known as the Warp Drive. This is the ability to teleport your vehicles and even your fortresses. Over time, the Warp Drive will consume energy and will consume more and more energy per second as it goes. This spooled up energy will then allow it to be released and jump forward. So right now we have the jump to go 95-ish meters forward, zero up and zero meters right. The direction is controlled by these warp rods and the actual charging itself is controlled by the warp chargers. Quite a simple system for what is essentially teleportation. Here it is, all in the MISC tab, all for your viewing pleasure. We also have the Warp Terminator. The Warp Terminator sits on the end of the Warp Rod and allows you to add additional charges. It's really that simple. You use this to build in different ways. I have built in the most simplistic way possible, having the rod facing forwards and having the what do you call them, the warp chargers just facing left, right, and a little bit to the to the um, bottom of the warp charger. Nothing really too special there. So, let's unleash this then. So over here, I have my lovely control block, and every second we're going to have in 30 seconds, this will now teleport. Now I've set that up, so that will take a little bit, and then we should move forwards. So let's actually put the camera here. 
And there we are. That took a long time to charge up, but finally it teleported. Now, the smaller vehicles and such will be a bit easier to warp, at least from my current understanding. This is a brand new update, so if I am wrong about anything, please check the description. There's a good chance I've already corrected myself there. So, 14 meters of warp rod and 24 meters of chargers, 24% of the length of the vehicle is warp rodded, providing a forwards efficiency of 1%. Not much at all. So let's see if that is actually the case. If we add more rods or something like that, is that the way to make this more efficient? quite simply. Yes, indeed it is. Now it's got an efficiency of 8%, which should hopefully mean, yes, indeed, the meters are going up a lot faster. So smaller vehicles will need less rods, and that means, I assume, less energy as well. Wow, that is much, much further. So if we did that again, it would go a much longer distance than our initial test, which was kind of small considering the size of the fortress. And there we go. The final addition then. Now, there were other things added on this patch, a lot of improvements and a lot of things like tutorials and campaign-specific updates, but since there are so many of them, I have decided to simply add the link to the description to the full patch notes, so if you would like to view them, you can do it in your own leisure. It would be a bit too difficult to cover absolutely everything in this update video and not make it take like 30 minutes. So so here we are with the land movement algorithm, also known as the land AI. This is something people have been asking for for quite some time, so it's so nice to see it in the game. It's not really something I'm particularly interested in, but I am interested to see how people now build tanks now there's an official AI to do so. The land AI card can control tanks and other land vehicles. It is very similar to the naval AI, but it has a few key differences. And just to highlight this, now I've just thought about it, why don't we add the naval AI here? So here is the naval AI. We have enter broadside, leave broadside, nominal broadside angle, broadside minimum range, idle approach distance, turning circle, and depth requirement. Over here, we have the land variant. Enter, leave, nominal, broadside minimum range, idle approach distance, turning circle, and the most important one for me, cease movement range. Now that is different. Below this range to the enemy target, the vehicle will cease all movement and simply fire. This means that the AI isn't constantly going to be trying to move the vehicle, which means of course with a tank, it will stop still, aim its weapon and just continuously fire. This can be set quite far, as we can see here, or it can be set basically next to the enemy vehicle for a very annoying tank, or perhaps some kind of harassment land vehicle. I don't really know, perhaps even a kamikaze land vehicle using the new tactical nuke. Either way, it's a very cool addition in my opinion. The turning circle, which I believe is pretty much the same, can of course be used until you stop still in case people were wondering, because I did have a few people ask me about that. It is pretty much the same as the naval AI. Like it said in the description, they are very, very similar. So if you know how to use the naval AI, this should come very, very easily to you and just mess around with the cease movement range in addition to any other change which I'm probably missing. That is the main change though, which is certainly something very nice indeed. One difference I have just noticed is how it deals with depth requirement. So the naval AI simply reads as this. The ship will stay in waters with a depth greater than and then the number you've set up here. Whereas the land movement, which has the same name here, is this. Vehicle will not go into waters deeper than 10 meters, so pretty much it's the opposite. This will only go into waters that deep or more. 
This one, however, will not go into waters deeper than the number you've set up. And with that, I believe I've covered everything I would like to cover. Like I say, there are definitely more additions to this update than I've covered in this video, so if you would like to view them, once again, please click the link in the description. This is my first attempt at covering one of the From the Depths updates, and I hope it's covered all of the basics fairly well, so if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.